Good morning after Eve, everyone. My name is Mike at Filmboy24, and I truly appreciate you tuning in. Today is a very special day. We will be talking about the giant Lomo tank. What do I mean when I say giant Lomo tank? Well, this is what I mean. This is a sort of hard to find Russian film processing tank that's designed to process up to 100 foot continuous lengths of either 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter film. Now, this tank measures approximately 12 inches across while the 50 foot continuous tank or UPB1A measures about nine inches across. I believe that these tanks originally came with a second um, spiral reel. Mine did not, so I can only process one reel of film at a time. No matter, that's about all the uh, liquids I like to put in here at once anyway, and I'm just an experimenter and fun haver, so it doesn't really matter to me. But again, these are so hard to find that when one finally popped up on that site called E-something, uh, I had to grab it. They're usually somewhere in the $350 to $500 range, depending on when and if you can find them. I got this in that range. And let's talk a little bit about how you use it and how you load it. First and foremost, these are all used, and they were made, I believe, sometime in the 70s uh, in Russia. Now, mine... One of the first things that goes on these old tanks, if you can manage not to crack any of the Bakelite surface, is the hoses. They rot out or they, uh, they come off. Well, this one had a clear hose attached to it, which in my eyes is kind of a no-no when you're developing light-sensitive film. So all I did for mine was wrap it in one-inch black gaffer's tape. And it seemed to hold up fairly well okay uh, to, to this point. It, it's starting to come off a little bit at the bottom as I use it. Um, at any rate, that's not uh, overly important at this point. What is, is how do you get your film on here? Well, unlike the UPB1A, there's a couple of big differences. The first big difference is obviously this one will hold 100 feet of continuous... 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter film, which means you can now shoot those beautiful 100 foot rolls in your Bolex or in your Krasnogorsk K3 or any other 100 foot or any 16 millimeter camera for that matter, and load it without cutting it in half like you would with your other tank. Basically what this is, is you take off your threaded center I guess we call that a uh, threaded nut. Kind of like me, I'm a threaded nut. Separate the top cap, and then the bottom spiral is essentially just that. And you have your center post. Now, unlike the UPB1A that has a concave bottom surface, so when you're spinning it to load it, uh, it sort of just grinds flat on the surface, this one actually has a little bubble bump on the bottom of it which is great, this is very helpful. Uh, this piece goes into the bottom, like so. You thread your film on, which we're gonna do in one second. You put your top piece on, you put your spacer on top of the top cap, then you put the threaded nut down, and then you spin your spiral counterclockwise, which again is another major difference between this and the UPB1A. Um, the UPB1A spins clockwise to reel your film. This spiral is designed to hold up to 100 feet continuous. Now I say up to because you can obviously put 50 feet, 20 feet, 10 feet. Now it's not smart to do in most cases because you still got to use that much liquid in your, um, in your tank. Now since I'm such a film geek nerd, I actually measured and we're going to practice with this uh, old non-perf film that I've donated for my scientific purposes. Um, we're going to practice with this, but I actually measured this film when I was spooling it onto here and came to the determination that most reels of film are going to be somewhere in the 104 to 106 feet range. 
they give you a little bit of extra footage on the front and or tail for loading. I also discovered that this tank will hold about 110 feet continuous of film, which is nice so that you can get your header and your footer on there. And a lot of times I just use that, that uh, header that is exposed when loading the film. I use that as my leader when I'm scanning the film. At any rate, let's get started. I'm gonna show you exactly how easy it is to load this reel. Okay, let's load. Now, if you've seen my other video, my UPV 1A video, you know the, what this board is. It's sort of my universal loading board uh, that I put together. My dad cut a board out and sanded it and made it nice and pretty and I kind of added what I needed. Now on the right side here, for this particular tank, I simply taped down a three quarter inch stainless steel flat washer and I use stainless steel only because they're much, much thinner than standard steel and I didn't need a, a big ridge here to, um, to keep that in place. And I keep this washer here so that this little bump here just sort of stays in between there and it doesn't come off. You know, if you don't, then it's gonna rotate itself off the board and well, <laughs> and as soon as I say that, it doesn't. At any rate, let's take this apart. We take off our top nut, our spacer, our top cap. Now the top cap, flat on both sides. However, there is a flange on the edge and I always have the flange going down, it gives more it, gives, uh, it actually covers the end of the reel, and I'll try to give you a close-up here, but this is a uh, sort of tapers down on the edge. At any rate, the spiral has, yeah, my chair squeaks a little bit, sorry. The spiral has a little cutout here, two little, two little slits, and what you do, and again, I'm using, this is my donor roll of 16 millimeter. This is simply microfilm, and it's perfless. Purpleless, purpleless, perfellus, purpleless, no sprocket holes. What you want to do is you want to squeeze and crease about an inch of film on the end, and then you want to take the center of that inch and sort of just, you know, press it down a little bit so you have something that looks kind of like that. Now, you want to push one side in, the other side in. push it down into the front groove and you want to be a little bit uh, aggressive with it here and you want to pull it taut or as my dad would say taut then you want to take your top cap flange you know the outer flange down right on top put your spacer on top of the center spindle wind down your nut there and then you want to counterclockwise while holding your film at about a 45 degree angle and you want to just spin it counterclockwise and it will spool just like that now ordinarily I would not uh, leave this running the entire time while I spool this but I have kind of a funny story I want to share with you really quick I was talking to my middle sister of three yesterday on the phone and she's arguably the smartest of all of my siblings, I think they will all agree. And she was watching my most recent video on Kodachrome, and she had a good giggle because she said, Mike, I had no idea they were saying Kodachrome in that song, Paul Simon, 1973. She goes, all along, for all these years, I thought they were saying Coat of Chrome. <laughs> I love you, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think that would make for a good song too. <laughs> she is the most awesome person in the world. Oh, I lost my washer under there. Let me find it. There it is. And you just wind and wind and wind. Like I say, this is about 106 feet of film. Winds on very easy. In fact, I think this one winds much easier than my other UPB1A. Whoa, and there we go. And then you just find the end, and I keep my hand in here, and there. And that's all there is to it. This, this reel is fully loaded with 106 feet, continuous, non-snipped, 16 millimeter movie film. Can you see it? I feel like I'm driving an Indy car. Okay, 
That's good. That's good. What would be the next step, Mike? Well, the next step, by the way, you have to do all this in the dark, but once you do it once or twice, it's really easy. Set it into your light proof tank. Now, this is what makes it light proof. This top part right here, once you set that in there and you put your lid on, well, I guess the lid really makes it light proof, but the lid does not lock on, by the way. The lid just sits on top. Now, it has grooves. The lid uh, has a groove here and, you know, the upper flange here on the top of the tank that sits down into. And then there's a nice, pretty tight fit right here on top. At this point, you can turn on your lights. All of your liquids are poured in through the top. They are then all drained out through the bottom. When you are done and you're, all your agitation is done right here. Now there's a lot less up and down motion on these, on these bigger tanks than there is on the smaller ones. So you may have to use a little bit of left and right. Um, and it does tell you on the top of the lid here that your motion needs to be counterclockwise. And what that, and the reason for that is simply because that's the direction that you are spooling and it's not gonna fight against your spool in those liquids and unwind them and pop them out of the reel. If you are, obviously if you're loading single perf film, you're gonna want the perforations into the grooves. You always want your perforations into the grooves. If you're loading double perf film, which is what I shoot a lot, then you don't really have a choice. It's really all there is to this, this tank. So stay tuned for my very next video, which will feature my Bolex H16 Reflex, shooting a 100 foot daylight reel of 7231 negative, where I'm going to process that roll of film in this tank we're going to uh, scan it, and then I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. So stay tuned. If you like this video, if you learned a little something, if you enjoyed the content, annihilate that like button for me. If you didn't like it, still hit the like button. Consider subscribing for me. Hit that bell notification so that you know every single time Filmboy24 uploads a new video and leave me a comment. What do you think about this tank? Let me know. Till next time. I'll see you on the next go around.